What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and I'm really excited for today's video. The reason I'm excited is because last night or I guess by the time you guys are seeing this the other day, it wasn't maybe last night when you guys, but anyways, last night I went to my locals and I actually went 4-0. I came first place undefeated with go second OTK Dino. I think this deck is insane, especially when you build it the way I build it. Not to brag, but I think the way it's built right now is just very, very powerful. Give you guys a quick rundown. I'll go more in depth in the deck profile itself but for a quick rundown we played two tier limit matchups one sprite matchup as well as one fluandries matchup so 4-0 all pretty meta decks i guess sprite has kind of fallen off but four meta decks and we went 4-0 i'm really excited to be showing you guys my list if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll catch it right here on the channel so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to guys subscribe because we're almost at 8,000. i really want to get to 8,000 before the end of the year i believe in every single one of you so thank you guys all and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get into the deck profile that i came first place with i'm super excited because i really Really like dino and the fact that i could come first with this is insane and funny enough i actually think it's a really good format for it so i just wanted to say that just before we get into the profile because i'm really excited just the fact that you can play dino and be successful with it is really really nice now let me explain my matchups actually real quick before we do the deck profile so you guys can understand why it's built the way it's built and then you guys can see that when you actually go to a locals or a regionals or any sort of tournament what to expect right so i built this deck to beat tier limits tier limits at my locals is very very prominent the other deck that's really prominent is fluandry so i really wanted to make sure that my main deck was focused on beating one of them and then my side deck was built to beat the other now my main deck can kind of deal with both so keep that in mind but it's more focused towards the tier limit matchup i know at my local specifically that the tier limit matchup is very very prominent it's probably the deck that's played the most at my locals and it's also the tier zero deck you know it's the best deck of the format so i wanted to be prepared for that and this deck i think is and then the side deck is really prepared for the fluandries matchup which by the way i hate the fluandries matchup i hate that deck so much but it is pretty popular so i wanted to be able to beat it as well right Right? So I just want to give you guys that the matchups I actually had were two tier limit matchups. Round one was tier limit. Round two was tier limit. Round three was Sprite, funny enough. And then round four was Fluandries. So my finals was against Fluandries. That was my matchups. Two tier, one Sprite, one Fluandries. Really excited to be showing you guys this. Let's get right into it. We are playing the three soul eating Oviraptor, of course. It is your best normal summon of the deck. Now I will say this actually, because I guess I also forgot to say this. This deck is a going second deck. So you want to blind go second with this deck. Now, while it may be an OTK deck, there are times where you don't OTK your opponent but then the really cool thing about this is after you break your opponent's board you can still make your own board right and with ash not being as prominent ov raptor is always really going to go through the only thing that you're ever going to be worried about is a tailament sulik but you can play around that as well right so playing three ov raptor of course your best normal summon then we're playing the one misc misc is obviously really good for you know a lot of reasons misc is a really broken card but on top of that it's not a dark it's not a light so it's not going to get hit with the bestials a lot the only thing you ever get worried about with this deck is if it gets hit with one of the ishizu shufflers because shuffling your misc back can be really detrimental detrimental to your combo but in a lot of situations if that doesn't happen or you know you have ways to play around that kind of then you're in a good spot but you're playing the one misc of course and then we're playing the three baby serosaurus as well as the one petite pteranodon now i was on two and one instead of three and one i was on two and one but i decided to play the third because here's the thing with this deck right there's so many two card combos in this deck so pretty much what i wanted it to do was i wanted to be as consistent as possible with seeing the two card combos and then seeing board breakers or anti meta cards in the rest of the hand right so what i wanted to do here for example is baby plus misc is combo baby plus ov is combo right so i wanted to max out on the baby because baby with any one of these is also combo right misc plus ov is also full combo which is really nice as well baby is also full combo with another card which is your archosaur so we're playing two archosaur and again that's why i'm maxing out on the baby serosaurus because opening this with either ov or misc or Archosaur is full combo. Now, again, you want to go second, but even if you go first, this deck doesn't struggle because you can still combo, make Dweller, make Baguska, depending on the matchup, and then you're going to be winning in that sense, right? So just the fact that this deck has access to so many utility rank four monsters, and then it has access to a big monster right here that can just push for a game, which is two ultimate conductor Tyranno, is just crazy to me, right? So that's why I wanted to play this deck. It's because it covers everything. It's one of the only decks in the game, I think, right now that has an obvious win condition in terms of conductor Tyranno, but then the ability to flex into whatever cards you need to flex into when you're going up against certain matchups so like i said dweller is really good into tier baguska is really good into fluanderies and other stuff like that so that's why i really like this deck conductor tyranno obviously make this deck really good and you can otk in this deck super super easily which is why you want to go second but again going first you're in a really good spot we're playing the one giant rex of course the one pancratops that's it for the dino monsters or the dino dinos i guess you could say because the other dino that you're playing is scrap raptor and then you're playing the one chimera so we're playing the scrap engine as well scrap engine is really good going first but it's also really 
really good going second because it pops cards your scrap wyvern specifically actually pops cards that your opponent controls so it can help you break boards in that sense as well but we're playing this lineup i think this is the perfect lineup for the monsters this is it i don't want to be playing anymore this is the most consistent because again like i said the thing you want to max out on are the combo pieces so baby plus arco baby plus soul baby plus mist these are the pieces that are going to get your combo started and then these are the pieces that complement that right so i wanted to be playing these panker tops again and when you're going second pank is also really powerful so that's it for the monster count i think this is the perfect ratio i would not switch this up at all moving into the spell cards here we are running a decent amount of spell cards so we're playing three fossil dig of course you have to be playing three fossil dig in a deck that's all dinos and it pretty much searches everything in your deck we're playing two double evolution pill this is to get to your conductor as fast as possible and then we're playing three pot of prosperity now you guys might be wondering spanko you only have one prosperity what's going on well i only had one because i was borrowing the other two i know I know it's shameful. Actually, this is dusty as heck too. But you should be playing three prosperity. Prosperity is obviously very powerful in this deck. Yes, you want to be able to OTK, but even if you don't, you can still combo. But the thing is, there are combos in this deck where you can OTK through prosperity, which is insane. So you want to be maxing out on this. Sorry guys for the proxies. I know it kind of sucks, but I was borrowing them from my friend Alpha. You guys have seen Alpha on the channel before. I was borrowing them and uh, yeah, I had to give them back. So you have to be playing the props. I wouldn't change that at all. Then we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster as well as, yep, you guessed it, three Raigeki. I really like Raigeki this format. Raigeki is really good into the Fluandries matchup. It's actually not horrible into the Tier Limit matchup. You guys might be wondering, but yo, Spanko, the Tier Limit matchup, you know, they're going to get all their effects off and whatnot. But you're going to be playing cards, which you guys are going to see in a little bit, that if that happens, you can play around it and you can play through it. And if anything, it helps you out. So one of the cards that helps you out when this situation happens against the Tier Limit matchup is Triple Tactics Talent. If they're activating their effects, you can use the Triple Tactics Talent. And one effect that I like to use a lot going second is stealing your opponent's monster because that does help you push for game speaking of stealing your opponent's monster we're playing the one change of heart here as well change of heart of course is really powerful into a lot of different decks but also just being able to take an opponent's monster a lot of the time people can't react to this like they don't have anything to actually stop this from going through so if this goes through you're in a really really nice spot here so that's why i'm playing the one change of heart and the two tactics you can up this to three tactics i just like change of heart because i felt like this was a little bit more generic because again when you're blinding second you just want to be able to get the effect off tactics is a little bit more of a difficult card to get off in some other matchup other than the tier limit matchup because a lot of people are not going to be playing on your turn as much other than that matchup whereas this card is just kind of doesn't matter what you're playing against you just take the card and you can continue from there right that's it for the spell cards here we are running a good decent amount of spells but they're all power spells essentially then lastly to round it off i know you guys are going to hate me but you have to do this in today's format we're maxing out pretty much on all the bisted monsters we're playing three bang the mutt three Druis, and two sarnier this rounds off the deck it's 40 cards on the dot by the way and we're playing the eight bisted monsters these are really important to be playing at like the max number I guess except for Sarnier, but you have to be playing the Bastilles because against a tier limit matchup, it's just too powerful if you let everything go through. And again, you want to be able to OTK, right? And what do the Bastille monsters do really well? They put bodies on the board for you that can help you push for a lot of damage. You can still OTK through Prosperity just because you can put so many big monsters up on the board that sometimes you can put up 16,000 damage and even under Prosperity, you're going to be going for game, which is really nice. So you have to be maxing out on these. I know it sucks. And you're always going to side these out against the Fluandries matchup. Again, like I said earlier in the video, the deck is pretty much built to beat the tier limit matchup although yes like there are cards here like regeki that's really good into the full Andres matchup triple tactics is really good into the full Andres matchup so it's one of those things where it's kind of like hey the deck can deal with full Andres in the main deck as well but these cards specifically are for the tier limit matchup you want to be able to win that matchup every single time and it's really important to play these to do that Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing the one Dolka as well as the one Lagia. A lot of your combos end on one of these if you're going first and into a matchup you don't really know. And the reason for that is because sometimes you don't want to specifically go into like a Dweller or a Baguska. These two are really good into the Telemate, into the Flowandries matchup. But if you're not knowing what deck you're going to be going up against, Lagia and Dolka are always the safest ones to go into. So that's why we're playing this toolbox over here for the rank fours. Now, this is the best thing about this deck, right? Depending on the matchup, you literally build the board based off what you're going against, which is insane. And then we're playing the one Dugaris. This helps you OTK through Prosperity. This is a lot of times you actually don't even need to make this and you can still OTK. But in a lot of situations when you're under Prosp and you see a way to game, then you just go Dugaris to try to push for game. And then we're playing the one Wallow because we're playing so many of the Bastille monsters. Wallow is really powerful as well. And then for the Prosperity targets, keep this in mind, right? The deck is very combo heavy. Now against certain matchups, you can take away or Prosperity away some of the less important ones. So again, if you're not playing as a tournament, it's really easy to just use Prosp on the Wallow, on the Dweller, on some other cards that I'm going to show you guys so it's very matchup dependent which is really nice with this the, the extra deck is really powerful because it just covers so much and the prosp is never going to be dead because you just remove cards depending on what you're playing against right and then for the link monsters
is we're playing the one link rebo and the one secure guard now this rarely comes up when you're going second specifically because you're playing the bestial monsters so this rarely comes up it only ever comes up when you brick on like an archosaur or something like that so you can get a double evolution pill so because it rarely comes up these two a lot of the time do get banished with prosperity as well we're playing the one pentastag the one scrap wyvern ip mascarena we're playing the one unicorn these are all standard combo pieces i mean unicorn is more of a board breaker card but these are more standard combo going first a lot of your boards are going to end on like ip or you're going to end on like an apollusa here that you're going to see so these are really important to be playing you can end on sometimes apple plus ip and then on your opponent's turn go into unicorn with ip plus another card you control so it's really powerful so you're playing the one apple the one access code to try to push for game again you rarely ever use it but when it comes up it's really powerful as well as the one borrowed savage dragon of course we know scrap raptor is a tuner and making savage on your opening combo is really powerful as well so that's it for the extra deck it's very powerful it's it's i think the perfect extra deck Moving on to the side deck over here, we are playing uh, some cards that I understand are kind of can be pretty expensive, but if you guys want to win them with this deck, this card is just so insane. Kosh Sura Fenrir. Fenrir is so powerful against rogue matchups, which is something that people don't think about because again, like I've been talking about, I've been talking about specifically the tier limit matchup, which is obviously the tier zero deck. I've been talking about the Flawanderies matchup, which is probably the second best deck in the format. But the thing is, when you go into locals, when you go into regionals, there's a lot of situations where you're going to see rogue decks. And so for those situations, you want a card that's really good going first, but also really good going second. So the Fenrir's are here. The thing is with this card, it doesn't synergize at all with the Bestial monsters, right? Well, as soon as you put a Bestial on the side of the field, then these cards aren't great. So these cards come into any matchup essentially that's not the tier limit matchup. In the Fluandries and the Sprite matchup, these always come in. So I'm really happy that I played these. I think these cards are insane. I sided this in going first against the Fluandries matchup. Again, against the Fluandries matchup, you want to side out the entire Bestial engine, right? So for that reason, you need cards to put in. When you're going second against the Fluandries, you want to play three Gadarla. I actually really like the three Kaijus. These can come in in theory against other decks as well but i really like the three kaijus on this locals like this came in really clutch because a lot of the time my opponent will actually end on a barrier statue and there was one game specifically i think it was game two where he went first he ended on a barrier statue i just hit godarla and then it was kind of a back and forth it wouldn't like auto win me the match of course because he's still ending on an empin he's still ending on the trap card on the map right so it wasn't like an auto win card but just getting rid of the barrier statue gives you so many different options that you can now do right so godarla is really important we're also playing three lightning storm these are also specific specifically for the Fluandries matchup, seeing these is really, very powerful. Being able to break the boards, especially the monsters, are what the most important thing is with this deck, right? So Lightning Storms with Raigekis is really, really powerful against the Fluandries matchup. Fun fact, my Fluandries opponent hit me with a Solemn Judgment when I used Raigeki, and then I ended up using the Lightning Storm. I actually was going to use both, one Raigeki to hit the monsters and then Lightning Storm to hit the back row, but then, um, yeah, he just Solemn Judgment to the Raigeki, and then I was like, okay, well, I still have Lightning Storm for your monsters, and I was able to play. This was in game three, it was super, super powerful, and then three Cosmic cyclone is also really good into back row matchups i actually didn't see this all day but you have to be siding it right and lastly this is a card that not a lot of people are on but when you're forced to go first cards that i like to side are fenrir fenrir is really powerful going first but i also love siding judgment the thing is with this deck is it puts up a lot of monster heavy boards if your opponent has a dark ruler no more or forbidden droplets it can be very troublesome because if they hit your monster again you're not playing any back row in this deck outside of the judgments so if they hit your monsters you're kind of in a stuck position so judgment is really powerful where if you're going first and you set up your combo because keep in mind your combos are two card combos right so if you've set up your full combo and then have a judgment set you're in such a good spot so this is it for the side deck i'm actually going to be honest with you when i say i think this side deck is insane the thing is again i was expecting full wanderies which is why i sided the godarlas so i guess you guys could also swap these out another card that i really wanted to side but i just didn't have space to side was ghost bell because the ishuzu cards can be really really annoying so ghost bell is really good into the ishuzu stuff skeltmeister is also really good but i didn't get the chance to side them and luckily i mean i didn't need them but yeah another card that if you didn't want to play the Godarlas or you guys didn't want to play the Cyclone. I think Cyclone is too important though because Dimensional Fissure, Macrocosmo, all that stuff is really relevant. So you guys can play the three Ghost Spell instead of these, but I have so much tier limit hate already that I didn't think that I needed it. So I think this side deck was really, really powerful. I I'm really happy with it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my first place undefeated Dino deck profile. Now this deck is just insane going first, going second. It can do so many different things. I'm super happy that I can bring Dino back into today's format and be successful successful and competitive with it. I think this is a really, really good deck. It's really fun to play as well. And it's not one of those streamlined decks that does one specific thing. You can do a lot of different things based on the matchup you're going against, which is really, really powerful. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We're on the road to 8,000. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, discussions, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll catch it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys stay tuned in for all that good stuff. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.
quantity. 